Oh, is this the war? The power of one man doesn't amount to much. But however little strength I'm capable of. Is this Roy? I'll do everything humanly possible to protect the people I love. And in turn, they'll protect the ones they love. Sounds like a pyramid scheme. <laughs> There's just one thing. If you hope to eventually protect everyone, then you'll have to figure out a way to stand at the top of the pyramid. Ooh. I can only imagine how good it must feel up there, Hughes. Although, I'll never be able to find out without all the support I can get. You're not very subtle, you know. <laughs> That's true. You've got my support, but you could have just asked me. It ought to be fun to watch, though. And maybe your naive idealism might actually do some good. Oh, and he looks at them, too. He knows! Oh, your face just gave everything away right there. Wow, what a strong opening to the episode. So we know Roy is a career climber, right? But that gave it a little bit more heart rather than just like, I want power. I'm wondering if this isn't some foreshadowing for the fact that Roy actually will come to power, that he will oust Bradley as leader. But yeah, he could definitely afford to be more subtle about it. Episode 10, Separate Destinations. Pardon me, Lieutenant. <clears throat> I'm looking for Edward Elric, the full metal alchemist. Sure, this is his... <clears throat> is that... If you were Bradley? Hmm. Sorry to interrupt. It is. <laughs> this guy is so hands-on, I love it. Oh, you're injured. I thought a nice melon might cheer you up. I guess. Yes, thank you, sir! <laughs> I understand you've been checking up on some of the senior staff. Is this true, Major Armstrong? Uh, yes, sir, but uh, how did you know I was... Uh... You should know that nothing gets past me, Major. Uh-oh. That doesn't bode well for Roy. I knew he knew. He looked him right in the eye. Tell me what you know about the philosopher. That stare. And I hope for your sake that you don't know too much. <laughs> <laughs> the hell? That's terrifying. There's no reason for you to be so uptight. I know that there's been some suspicious activity within the military lately. Oh, uh, that's just, uh... A list of the research team assigned to study the Philosopher's Stone. Every person listed in this document has been reported missing. <gasps> they all vanished several days before the fifth laboratory collapsed. So I could be wrong about this, but this confirms that the fifth laboratory was a military operation, right? So they were also doing research on the Philosopher's Stone. Prisoner research, if you know what I mean. You've all proven yourselves to be men of a trustworthy character. From this point forward, I'm giving you the direct order to forget this matter and all that it concerns. That's really suspicious. Keep this to yourselves at all costs. Sir! Where is he? Has Fuhrer Bradley been through here? <coughs> Gotta go. Damn bodyguard thinks he's my shadow. I feel like he doesn't even need a bodyguard. But I did go and buy the train tickets you asked for. Thanks. And where are you heading off to this time? Yeah, I'm wondering where they're going because it seems like the Philosopher's Stone was sort of a dead end, no? If I'm Ed and Al, I'm not sure where to go from here. With the way things have gone lately, Al and I decided we should go back and visit our old teacher. <laughs> nice. I think I'm too scared, brother. There's no way she's not gonna kill us. Look, don't you check it out on me now. I'm scared too, okay? I already know based on this, I'm going to love it. I'm going to love everything with the teacher. We've seen her briefly in flashbacks, but also Ed has referenced her teachings a couple times. So I'm excited to see her in, in, in person. There it is. All the way down here. Hmm. Uh. <laughs> what, what is it? That! Right there! Right before Dublin! <laughs> Find your girl who loves you like Winry loves auto mail. <laughs> People have such interesting fascinations in this show. Like, what was her name? Meshka? Mishka? With books? Winry with mechanics or auto mail? Ed with alchemy? Armstrong with muscles? I don't know what it is, but for some reason I'm attracted very strongly to people who have passions like that. Not necessarily romantically, but just in general. There's always something you can learn from them about not just their thing, their trade, but also life. There's something about devoting yourself to something that gives you auxiliary life lessons. It's like Bruce Lee said, you know, all things I learned from martial arts. I think it's because there's a parallel between skill building and real life. You sort of start in ignorance and you go along and you meet challenges. You have to draw from the best characteristics in yourself to overcome those challenges, and that'll give you some insight into the next step on the journey. So I immediately gain respect for characters in shows who have this kind of dedication or passion to things. I think that's partly why I'm so drawn to Ed and also to Winry now. 
I don't have to take you anywhere. Well, somebody has to pay for my travel fare. And why does it have to be me? Come on, brother. What's the big deal? It's on our way. Only if you want to, Al. <laughs> Al's definitely going to say yes. Tell Grandma. She'll make you a fine wife someday. <laughs> Start that again. <laughs> Very direct. I would rather talk about my wife anyway. <laughs> This guy is such a social animal. Daddy has a bunch of important work that needs to be done. But I promise I'll do it as fast as possible. Thanks, Mr. Hughes. I really appreciate your hospitality. You just make sure to come visit us anytime you're in Central, okay? Our home is your home, too. Till then, take care of yourself. Bye, hon. Right. Work hard, Daddy! Bye-bye! You be safe out there. That's so sweet, but the way this show has me so paranoid, I feel like something bad's gonna happen to them, and now I can't even enjoy this. I just feel a sense of dread. Speaking of respecting people, there's a certain kind of person I, I often respect. It's people who can actually fit into standard expectations of society in a way that's totally authentic. There are a lot of people who sort of go along with norms just because they don't really have the strength to make their own decisions. Like, because, you know, planning out your life is sort of chaos. But Hughes is someone who, like, knew what he wanted and got it. And I think him seeing that is why he's, like, proclaiming, professing the virtues of his own family, his wife and daughter, because that's, like, his whole being. It's really wholesome. It's nice. Like, he's very interested in people. He gets a lot of utility from the happiness of others, I think. So why is it suddenly so important that you guys see your teacher? Well, there are a couple of reasons. For starters, I'm a little tired of getting my ass kicked. <laughs> he did get really beat up recently. And to ask her about the truth within the truth. We haven't gotten any closer to figuring it out. There's a chance our teacher knows something about it. Let's hope she at least gives us a chance to ask her. You should be more worried about explaining your appearance to her, Al. Oh, she hasn't seen her? Seen him? Considering... She's gonna kill us when she finds out what happened! Wow. It would've been nice to at least have had a girlfriend before I died. Maybe you guys should get a new teacher. Yeah, this strikes me as being a really good choice because they've been through so much. They've had these really strong beliefs that have just been like crushed again and again in, in the first couple episodes. Like even at the beginning of this episode, I'm like, where do they go from here, right? So it seems like a great choice to go back and sort of take stock in some wisdom, some teacher wisdom. Riots in Lior. Yes, it's apparently in response to that sham religion that was preying on the townspeople. Right, I remember that. realized they were being suckered. Yeah, Ishval and Lior. The East has been a real hotbed, huh? I'm afraid it's not just the East. There have been reports of uprisings in the North and West as well. Is that Cheska? Philosopher's Stone, human sacrifices, and the outright genocide of the Ishvalan people. How could this even happen? And who could have orchestrated something as terrible as this? I've got to tell the Fuhrer right away. No. Hello, Lieutenant Colonel. It's nice to meet you. Well, actually, hello really isn't the word I'm looking for. <laughs> No, Hughes! Full Metal Alchemist. Nah, he's fine. Full metal that was a cool shot. I like that back to back. That was awesome. Cool tattoo you got there. Those are your last words. Wouldn't you rather scream? <gasps> no! <clears throat> Alright, just a shoulder. Oh, did he get a knife in her head? Good job, but she's not human. You're back again already. Who gets to hear about your daughter this time? <gasps> Lieutenant Colonel, you're bleeding. It's nothing. I have to tell him. <sighs> Sorry. Forget I was here. What? <sighs> what? You are speaking to Lieutenant Colonel Hughes, and this is a matter of life and death. Your code was verified. Please hold while I connect you. Will you hurry? It's an emergency! <sighs> I paused at a bad time. I guess the fact that he's calling Roy Mustang and not someone else is that he has suspicions that whatever he just uncovered are the military's doing, or that somehow the military's compromised, which I guess we know it is. I don't like how they ominously showed the picture of his wife and daughter. I need to ask you to put down the receiver. Please, sir. Go on. Just hang it up. You look just like... But you're not. Who the hell are you, lady? I'm Second Lieutenant Ross, sir. Right. They can take human forms. You're not Second Lieutenant Ross. She has a mole under her left eye. You're observant. Very socially observant. Come on, have a heart, will ya? I've got a you have another knife? daughter waiting for me. 
So the last thing I'm gonna do is die on them. You look surprised. What the hell are you? No. Don't tell me. Hughes! You throw away your lives for nothing. Alicia. Remember, Daddy loves you. I'm sorry. Damn it. <laughs> Can't catch a break. <laughs> oh man, I really liked Hughes. He was such a beautiful character, I feel like I didn't get enough time with him. I was right that they were setting up something bad to happen, but I didn't realize it was for him. Although I don't know if that's better or worse. What did he uncover? What was the, the secret he figured out? I'm just gonna take a wild guess. The Ishvalan Civil War is somehow cover for research into the Philosopher's Stone by the military. But I have no idea what role the Seven Deadly Sins or whatever they're called play into it. Damn it, I'm so pissed I don't even want to continue the episode. Hughes is a really excellent cook. Oh no. But Hughes is obnoxious. He doesn't know when to shut up and he spoils his daughter rotten. He did come by your hospital room a lot to talk to you. He was a good guy. He always made it a point to come and keep me company. And it didn't matter when, he'd even blow off work. We should figure out some way to thank him next time we're there. Yeah, we should. My heart. <laughs> Daddy said he has a bunch of work he needs to do! No! Stop it! Stop putting dirt on him! Daddy! I think I understand what drove those boys when they tried to bring back their mother. Are you alright, Colonel? Yeah, I'm fine. Except, it's a terrible day for rain. But what do you mean? It's not raining. Yes, it is. It's raining in here too. Well, that was heartbreaking. In hindsight, they really set that up good. <laughs> like, how kind he was to his daughter, how beautiful his family was, how nice he was to everybody, the fact that he was such a good ally to Roy. It's a nice touch having Roy sort of reflect on the Elric brothers, right? And like their decision to try to bring back their mother. I feel like Hughes was more than just an ally for Roy. I feel like in a way he's also kind of keeping him in check, keeping him sane. Because Roy, whatever his stated intentions are, he is sort of power hungry and he's kind of playing a dangerous game. And Hughes being his friend and ally is sort of a humanizing touch and now that's gone. I'm telling you to explain as your commanding officer. You're disobeying a direct order, Major. I cannot tell you. There's gotta be an officer above me that's ordered him to keep quiet. Oh right, it was Fuhrer Bradley. I hate to say it, but it sounds like there might be some kind of conspiracy going on here. I will become the Fuhrer of this country, and I will take vengeance for Hughes. I will do these things because I have to do them. I'm going after the senior staff. Are you with me, Lieutenant? Do you even have to ask? Wow. Yeah, he sort of is becoming unhinged. Not in like a crazy way, but just... This is definitely going to change the trajectory of his life. And it's going to put him at odds with the military and military command. I definitely do get the distinct impression that there's a danger for Roy. And I don't just mean like in terms of his life and going against the grain. I mean like a personality danger. One thing about the show is that people get consumed with things. And sometimes that's a positive thing, like Ed and Alchemy becoming such a master, but it's also often a negative where you get lost in it. Also like Ed with Alchemy. Like getting lost in something to the point where you are blind to the other things around you. So this just got a lot more interesting with Roy and his mission to become Fuhrer. Oh, it's over. <laughs> Damn, that episode was crazy. I mean, I this, this show's one of those things where I love it. I love it, but it hurts. You know what I mean? It's so heavy in the best and worst ways. One thing I feel like this episode did is... <laughs> it feels stupid saying this considering all that's happened but it just reinforces the fact that the stakes are high and like anything could happen which is very exciting as tragic as Hugh's death is because this is the death of a major character Nina and Alexander as terrible as that was it was a one episode arc in the show but Hughes is someone that you know we've sort of built a relationship with over time like I particularly loved his conversation with Winry in episode 9 I think it was and just like that he's gone so it's like simultaneously really painful but also really exciting and very compelling stuff but that's the end of episode 10 I'm looking forward to episode 11 where I, I suspect they'll meet their teacher, which is very cool.